Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquit, and uh, in this video, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to use Terrain uh, in Unity. Now, I'm going to open up Unity by clicking on the icon down here. I've already created a scene uh, here, uh, but you guys would hit New, create a new scene, and make sure it's set up to 3D and uh, install packages such as characters, environments, and particles so that we can kind of maybe show some of those too. But I didn't want to have you guys wait through the entire process of it of loading, so I'm just opening up the scene directly here. So once again, we find ourselves in a default Unity scene. So in order to create something, right, to work with, of course, we're going to need some terrain. The terrain is found, as we can see up here, under Game Object, 3D Object, and Terrain. So we go to Game Object, 3D Object, and we'll click on Terrain. Now by default, just like we mentioned before, now you see I zoomed out, it does, it could tell, you know, you could probably tell that it was an uh, extremely large piece of terrain because as I zoomed out, your camera and your directional light seemed to turn into nothing. But obviously without anything in the scene to give uh, uh, any relation or aspect or ratio to, uh, or scale, uh, it's hard to tell how large this is, and this is a pretty massive piece of terrain. So we're actually going to shrink it down, and I want uh, to you, for you guys to kind of see the settings section over here. Uh, of the terrain. So when you have terrain selected and you come over to the uh, inspector, it actually puts on a special script that allows you to change certain things about the terrain. Now we're going to get into these buttons in a moment, all of these tools outside of this, but the first tool of course is settings, which is one uh, which is this last one here that looks like a gear. Now there's a lot of different things that we can do and I'm not going to talk about the majority of them, but what I do want to mention especially is the, the resolution section down here where we can control the size. So by default set to 5 500 by 500. If we change that size to 250 and, and then put 250 down here, you can see how much smaller it is. In fact, it's actually only one fourth the size. Whoops, that didn't work. We'll do that again. It's one fourth the size of what it used to be, right? So we can double click it here, zoom in, center it so we can see a little bit better. And this is about the size of the train I want you guys to work with for, uh, for your assignment. Um, okay, so starting with that, we just have kind of a blank white piece of terrain, of course. There actually is no textures on it. Uh, we don't see anything. Um, so there's a couple things I want to mention as far as getting the, the, uh, the terrain to look better. And of course, because it's so big, when you hold down right uh, click and hit WASD, you can see how slow it's moving to get across uh, the scene. Now, the camera does speed up the longer you hold it, and that's one of the cool things about Unity. But if you want an instant jump in speed as far as the camera goes, hold down Shift. Right, and you'll get an instant jump in speed. So when you're dealing with much larger surfaces, if you hold shift, boom, like that, you can see how much faster I go flying across my terrain, okay? Um, so you guys can use that uh, as you're moving around um, with, the, uh, with the camera. So like I said, first thing we need to do is get a texture on this. Okay, and we actually go and do that by clicking on this middle of all of the tools, which is your paint texture tool. And you'll see a couple of things. We'll see brushes, and these are all the different brushes you can select. Unity, as of now, does not let you bring in custom brushes, so these are the only brushes you can choose. Um, this is where you add your textures under Edit Texture, and this is where you control the size of your painting. And so we're going to get to each one of those as we go. So I'll leave the default brush on. I'm going to go to Edit Textures, and I'm going to hit Add Texture. It's going to bring up this little dialog box we can see here, where you can add an albedo, or basically a diffuse, and a normal map. Um, so if it has a normal map, you can add it. In this case, the ones that are default in Unity don't have normal maps, so we'll add them without. Uh, and then how often it tiles, so how many times it repeats, is actually controlled by the X and the Y um, numbers here. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit select and we're going to open this up. Now this dialog box, right, just like the other ones, right, we can pull this thing out. Uh, and this little slider will actually change the thumbnail. So we can move the slider all the way up so we get a better shot of the thumbnails. And so if you install the environments package, so once again, if you go up to assets and you install package and you choose environments, or you do it right when you first start, this is where we get all of these uh, icons or um, uh, textures and such. And some of these are also found uh, from the particles. But if we want, uh, we can choose any kind of texture that we believe is the majority of the terrain. So whatever you want the majority of the terrain to look like. Do you want it to be grassy? Do you want it to be sandy, rocky, and so on? So there's three options here uh, that work pretty well. We have grass. We kind of have like this dirt slash grass, and there's like a mud. I guess you can do like this cliff one up here too, uh, even though it doesn't make as much sense. It looks better kind of on the mountainous areas. But if 
if we want the majority of the terrain to say be grassy, we'll select the grass texture here, right? We'll just double click it and then we hit add and you'll automatically see quickly as I hold W and shift to move in close and right click, um, you can see the grass across the entire terrain. All right, so the way the paint works is the first time you put a texture and you'll see it over here, um, but you can't really do anything with it unless you have at least a second texture loaded. Now, if you guys want, you can use other textures, not just the ones that come with Unity, but you can download textures or paint your own textures uh, and put them in there. But we can open up and we'll do edit texture here. And if you ever want to edit the texture, like after the fact, like I want to repeat it more or less, I can always click on edit textures and then hit edit texture again. Yes, it's a little redundant, but you can go in and change that one particular texture right and make any setting changes you need of course you can also just delete it completely but if you add, hit add texture for another one it will actually add a second texture so we can come in here and add another texture all right in this case we'll pick the grassy rocky albedo or grass rocky albedo there and double click it and hit add and so now we have two of them and the way you know which one is selected is you see this little blue line underneath it it's kind of um, small and, and hard to tell, but it, do, it does exist. There is a little line there to kind of explain that you have one selected over the other. And now I can actually start painting in different textures. So with this, say we got the terrain here, I can now click and hold my mouse and paint in that other texture. Now this texture is similar, right? It's similar enough to the other one that it's not so obvious when I'm painting it in, but we can kind of see that. And if I decide maybe I'll add a third texture in here, we can come in here and add this cliffy one. Um, and then boop, cliffy. I don't know why I said that, but yes. So we can add this cliff texture here and we can paint that in. You can see a very obvious difference. So of course you can choose any of these brushes. I mean, some of them seem nonsensical, but the star actually, I found some nice applications for it. I'll show you that a little bit uh, when we get into the terrain painting itself. But you can see right there that you can paint uh, anything in any of these um, forms. So you choose a different texture and you go in and paint those different textures. I want to go back with the grass and so on. I can do that. So there's a couple of things to keep in note though as you are painting textures on the ground. So say you want to paint paths and other things like that and get it detailed. First thing I find that unless you're trying to do giant areas, you want to keep your brush somewhat small so you have a little bit more control over where you're painting and what's happening. Okay. The other thing is, so you can see right here, obviously brush size. So we can type a number in or we can go in here. So there is a limit. The smallest brush size is a pixel according to uh, the size of the, the resolution of the, uh, the train that you're doing. And then the largest is 100, which is this. So yeah, there might be times where you want even a larger brush, but it only, got, it only has like a, a limited amount of, uh, uh, of range that it can go in. Uh, opacity, because this is technically what's going on when you paint terrain, uh, is you're painting maps behind the scene and you're basically just painting black and white maps that show, um, like I said, you, you never see them, um, but they basically say where one texture shows up, where one doesn't, and so on. Uh, so they use this the term opacity because you're dropping the opacity of the strength of that brush, but ultimately all that means in our case is that it doesn't show through uh, as well. If I have 100% opacity and 100% target strength, the moment I paint my train, I will get a 100% blend. Right, so you can see right there that that is that texture 100% versus the grass. So now we can really tell, of course, that there's a difference between those two. Now, if I drop the opacity way, 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 way down to say something like 10% and try painting it right, when I first click, it won't be as uh, thick. Now, you're also looking at this setting too, which is target strength. The two of them really help control opacity. Uh, target strength is like if you set it to one. That basically means at its height, you can it will paint fully, fully in. If I actually drop my target strength all the way down to say, maybe in this case, it's almost like 36%. If I paint, I'll never get that texture to show up more than 36% blended with the other texture. That's the most. So if I click over and over and over again, right? So that kind of caps how far I can blend it. Um, and then opacity controls... Um, how fast it blends. So I, if I'm at 100% opacity and I'm there with target strength uh, at 36 here or 0.361, uh, it will instantly paint it at that, um, that uh, opacity immediately as opposed to me clicking a couple of times and slowly painting over it. So it does take a little bit. I tend to like to keep my, um, my strength somewhere 
uh, towards the top, but not all the way up sometimes uh, when I'm first painting. When I want to fully blend something, yes, you go all the way to one, opacity all the way 100, and you get that completely in. But when you want to get those edges nice and soft, I tend to drop it down to at least 50% and drop the opacity way down and see if I can just blend it just a little bit nicer, right? And then maybe even paint back over uh, some of the other spots there with like the original grass and then just keep trying to blend all of these textures. Whoops, I double clicked it. Right. So anyways, you can get a lot of control. I mean, if you zoom in, like I said, the whole point was if you zoom way in, you can get and see the differences between everything. So say if you want everything to be a nice, strong grass and we go back in and we paint grass everywhere. Right. And we want to make it look like there's a path going through. Right. We can come in here and I keep double clicking it for some odd reason, but we can go in there and now we can just kind of paint a path through the ground and have it just go wherever we want it. Right. Or whatever. And you can see that's a nice. Uh, fairly obvious but this is really boring of course right if we just have flat terrain and there's nothing going on it's just textures I mean sure we can probably paint some interesting textures but without actual um, uh, terrain uh, variation it feels extremely boring so how do we control that well that's these other tools in the front here these top three tools okay the first being the raise and lower tool so we're going to talk about that first now keep in mind that your opacity starts by default at 100 that is way too much uh, if you actually start painting your your uh, terrain will go flying up in the air and look pretty crazy so we'll actually increase the brush size and I'll zoom out a little bit too so we can see how I'll hold shift so we can move back faster and now if I hold and click the mouse you can see I start painting up terrain right and of course the longer I hold it the higher it goes there is a cap to how high it goes eventually it will stop but that is controlled by the settings we come down here where it says terrain height it will go all the way up to 600 and then I'll stop this is actually it has to go pretty high to go to 600 600 so we're not going to be able to cap it but that's how you can control that um, but anyways if you want to lower something you basically just hold down shift and then click it again so you just click to raise it hold shift to lower it okay it doesn't go lower than zero though once it goes back to zero the terrain will flatten perfectly so you can't if you want to kind of create a valley effect with your terrain you actually have to paint up on both sides and then have the middle side just lower in general right uh, you can't really just paint down from the beginning right because it will just end at zero so and this is where I found that I was going to say before where I find the star is actually somewhat useful if you kind of come in here and do this you can get these very bumpy kind of mountain ranges of course they don't look the best or realistic right because they're a little too bumpy but that's what some of these other tools are for including this third tool right here and we'll get to the second one in a moment but this uh, third tool which is called smooth height if I go and switch this back to like a normal soft brush when you paint with this it kind of flattens down uh, the uh, the terrain right it smooths it out hence the name now of course if I add if I click back on it whoops this third one here and add my opacity all the way up I'll have a lot longer or a lot stronger I should say strength and you see it will quickly drop everything down but this now allows me to get some nice bumpy terrain quickly without having to manually pull up every little area and that's where I find that the star tool actually works really well even though it does seem like a silly brush to have, right? So now we have some fairly interesting looking terrain down here. So you can create mountains and all sorts of crazy stuff using that. Now the second tool here is our paint height tool. And the paint height tool, you set a particular height, okay? Uh, and then you just paint to it. This is where the height is set down here. Right now it's set to 120, which is still fairly high. If I set it to something low like 20 and I start painting, it will paint. And you can see that that's 20, right? Of course, if I had left it, remember, it goes all the way up to 600. So that's pretty ridiculous, of course. Um, but yeah, once it gets up to exactly 20, it stays flat. So you can use this to kind of build, slowly build like steps, like Terrence type stuff uh, into the terrain. So if I then say maybe type in instead of 20, I type in. 10 then I can kind of create this over here right and kind of stair step it up a little bit and then use the third tool the smooth tool to smooth out these areas to allow the player to easily run up those areas right so we can have like little plateaus on higher areas of course that's way too much right we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want a path to be that steep right if you're trying to make something realistic of course your paths are going to be at a very slow grade uh, that is just a little ridiculous and of course players will know that if you've ever been on a road unless you live in San Francisco chances are the grades are very very low uh, they're never as steep as that if you're going to ever climb something up um, but anyways those are basically how you uh, control the uh, the train editing so I'm just trying to fly up here a little bit holding shift so we can see a little bit better um, and so we covered the painting and we covered all of these tools right here 
um, which was our raise and lower, paint height and smooth. So the next couple of things I want to talk about are placing trees and painting details. So when we added the environment stuff, okay, and I'll zoom back in now, when we added the environment stuff, it also added some trees from speed trees. So speed trees working with Unity, they're actually also working with Unreal too. Um, but they are working with Unity and they've given Unity some free trees uh, that come default when you install that environment's package. So just like the paintbrush, we need to add trees, right, to paint, so to speak. So we come over here and we go edit tree and then hit add tree. Uh, and then we're going to click this little circle right here and we get to choose our trees. So here's the trees and not everything are trees, obviously. I mean, some of these are other things. Um, so there's only four trees. There's a broad leaf. So there's two of them, a desktop and a mobile, a desktop conifer tree and a palm desktop. Right. So there's a bunch of different types of trees uh, we can pick. In this case, I'll pick uh, the broad leaf. OK, desktop. And then we're just going to hit add. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that A, your brush is kind of small because otherwise you're going to paint a bazillion trees at once. So we're going to shrink the brush down a little bit. And the density is something you really want to drop right in the beginning, okay, because it tends to paint too many trees in one spot. And then there's a, there's a whoops, I clicked off of it. Then there is a tree height over here where it's set to random. And so you can randomly have it go to like a very far distance when you paint so that you're getting more randomness in the trees. And of course it can randomly rotate each tree too. And now we just click and hold the mouse and paint. Now this particular tree is ginormous. So I think that might not have been the best option first, but you can kind of see how when I held it down, it just painted a whole bunch of trees at once, which isn't the most effective thing, right? So if we zoom out a little bit again, I start painting some more trees and we get some right in front of the camera. It, yeah, it does look pretty ridiculous. This particular tree, uh, we definitely want to make sure the density is all the way down before we paint. But I have found that just like um, the raise and lower, if you hold shift, you can erase trees. I find that this works too. Sometimes you'll paint you know, too many trees. You come in there and you just kind of delete the ones you don't want. It looks a little bit better when you don't have 5 million trees in the same spot. Okay, uh, But this tree maybe is a little too thick. So what we'll do is I'll add another tree. And of course, you can you know, mix and blend any of them. In fact, I'll, I'll pick in this case, I'll just pick a palm tree. And we'll put that in there, right? And same kind of thing. I start painting, right? We can get palm trees everywhere, just like go crazy. And the great thing too is they snap to the terrain. So as you paint, uh, let me click back on the terrain here. I clicked off of it again. But as you paint onto uh, areas that go up, you'll see that it snaps to the terrain. And even if you alter the terrain, so I come back in here and raise and lower it, right? Whoops. I went the wrong direction with that. If I hold shift and lower it, right, the trees will go down and pop with it. So if I paint them up or down, you see they actually move uh, with what I'm painting. So if I paint it up, see how they snap and match whatever the train is looking like. All right. Um, so you can control the density. Don't do this, right? This is just too much, right? This is just too dense. I get that we want to create like forests and stuff sometimes, but if the player can't run through it because there's just that many trees or you're having a slideshow like every every frame, uh, you get one frame a second. I mean, that's just way too many trees, right? So we'll just go in and we can delete some by holding shift, um, of course, with the tree editor, not with that, uh, and then go in and paint out some of the trees. Now, of course, if you shrink your brush way down, then you can literally remove a tree at a time, and that tends to work a little bit better, right? So you can choose which trees you don't want. So you can randomly paint a bunch of trees and then just go in and start deleting some of them. So you can mix and match any types of trees. Whoop, I had some crazy pop there. But you can mix and match uh, any types of trees that you have in there and paint them in there. But these trees were all done using speed tree and I wanted to show you guys that super fast. I'm not going to actually get into the program, but if you do go to speedtree.com, you can see that they have a speed tree for Unity. If you're willing to pay, uh, it's $19 a month. It has integration into it. I, I recommend coming here and watching this video just to see like what are all the options and why you would want to use something like speed tree. Like I said, I'm not necessarily going to uh, teach you it, but just want you to know of the program. And it is an industry standard program. They use it for games. They use it for movies. I've even used it on a project. Uh, it's actually a really, really great tool. Um, so anyways, I'm going to minimize this and get back to Unity. Um, and so the last kind of thing that I wanted to, uh, to show you as far as the main lecture is concerned uh, is this, which is the details. And so this works just like the trees, but the details have you paint different types of things, like in this case, in this case, grass. So I'm going to hit edit details uh, and I'm going to hit add grass. And um, these are a lot of the settings. If you want to have it switch between a multiple colors, uh, you can actually change your colors here and your grass will come in at different colors. But let's load up a grass texture first. So we come up here and hit that circle and we can scroll down. There's a couple of grass textures that come with it. There's, there's one here, but I'm going to use these. 
All right, and we're going to click there, the grass frond 02 albedo. So we'll slick, um, select this, and I'll hit add. And this is another one of those where when you paint it, I mean, you got to keep your opacity way down. And even then, it just paints them like crazy. So I find that works best is to paint it. So I'm going to hold and paint a bunch of grass. I mean, and that is a ton. I mean, absolute ton of grass. Um, but you paint that grass in there. And then if you hold shift, it will actually slowly delete it, which I find, I don't know why it does. It paints it so quick. It might be like a little bug in the system. But if you come in and then hold shift and delete, you can actually get it better. You really don't want it to be that super thick. Right, but it is pretty cool, and these are known as camera facing, so billboards. So as you rotate around them, you'll notice they're always facing you, right? Um, so it, try, it helps sell, even though they're a flat plane, it helps sell that they have some dimension to them. Now, of course, if we want the player to run around in the scene, we come to our standard uh, assets, go to characters, first person, prefabs, and we can drag a first person controller in here, right? And then we lift him to make sure he's not going through the ground, right? And then if we go to our game view, um, and hit maximize on play. If I hit play, we can now take a look at what some of this looks like from ground level. And the cool thing about the grass is it does kind of move back and forth. Though it does start off very tall. I mean, for the player, the player seems a little shrimpy. Uh, if you want to change the height of the player, uh, my recommendation is you can either move the camera. Don't scale the character, right? If you grab uh, the character controller, there are, whoops, I'm in game view, so let me switch out of that. You can grab the camera itself right and uh or not the main camera but the first person camera right and we can just move it up slightly okay and then if you hit play uh you'll just be a little bit taller right so we're not like the grass is like hitting our heads or whatever um so that's one way of doing it um i think there's a way in the settings to do it too but i'm not going to necessarily cover that but you can see that the colors of the grass are controlled by those two colors we had before they'll automatically blend with it but they kind of add this realistic look with um with the wind blowing and you can even do that with the trees too the trees have wind zones and things like that uh, a lot of which can be controlled and created originally in speed tree if you do uh, intend on using that program at any point um, or whatever so that's basically what i kind of wanted to uh, to cover uh, as far as this lesson goes, I mean, I can throw in one last quick thing. Since you guys did install the particles, if you guys want to play with them, don't go crazy with them. But if you want to play around with the particles a little bit, this is how the particles work. Uh, when you install the particles, you have come down here where it says um, particle systems. Go to prefab just like any other thing. And you can throw certain things in there. Dust storm tends to be a fun one. Right? There's a dust storm and a dust storm mobile. Uh, but we can drop in the dust storm, and what that does is it will throw in, uh, as you can see there, right, this, this kind of, uh, this looks like um, dirt and stuff blown around, right? Of course, dust storm, hence the name. But it does add a little bit of atmospheric effect, uh, and especially if it was a little bit darker in the scene. So if I was to grab the directional light, and then we rotate it so it's a little darker, and uh, let's say not that dark, something like dusk, and then I go back to the dust storm. Let's zoom way in here. Um, it adds more of an atmospheric effect, except for, of course, it is uh, blended uh, using a lighten mode. So at, at, when it's nighttime, it's like super bright. Of course, you can change that if you play around with the particles, uh, the shader down here. Right, there's different types of shaders. This one is a particles alpha blended, but we can always try particles and see if we can choose other ones like um, multiply, which will make it dark. So if you set it to multiply, now it's dark, and so you have like it's almost like a smoke effect instead. Uh, but you can change some of those particles by going in here, looking at the particle shaders, and seeing what it does um, to the uh, to the particles. It will actually change the way they blend in the scene. Okay, that one looks like it makes it even lighter. Right? But there's all these different options uh, to do that. Now, there's dust storm, there's explosions, there's fire, there's fireworks. Not sure why you'd want to do this. Um, I mean, it's cool, right? We can go in there and add these particles that act like fireworks. Maybe you can set that to where you want the player to, to go last or something like that. Um, but, yeah. Um, but, anyways, as far as the uh, assignment goes for this, I just want you guys to create a terrain that's the, the size of this, right? And then just hide your... Uh, 10 different um, objects, those 10 different collectibles like you had in the previous one, but now using terrain. I also uh, encourage, too, that you don't just make it in the terrain in between the trees, but set up some objects. So go into game objects, create some cubes, some spheres, things like that that you can add for the player to jump onto, do maybe a little platforming, uh, make, it, make it interesting. Um, but, uh, but anyways, yeah, so hopefully this video helps. 
uh, helps you understand a little bit more about terrain uh, in Unity and then some of the tools that you have available to you. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.